when I say Emirates, you might be thinking of this thing or Dubai, which is often the only Emirate people really know about, maybe along with Abu Dhabi. But there are five more which together constitute the United Arab Emirates, which the video is going to be about. But what is an emirate and why are they united? How did they come to be and how do they function? To answer that we need to go back to 1971 when the United Arab Emirates was formed. But to understand why it was formed, we need to further go back in time to the early 1800s. The place which is now UAE was divided into a number of small sheikhdoms which were ruled by a sheikh, as the name says. And this region was known as the Pirate Coast by the British who alleged that the ruling families of these sheikhdoms raided British Indian vessels which passed through the Gulf for trade with Iraq, Iran and Oman. However, this allegation has been dismissed by the current ruler of Sharjah saying that those were just excuses made by the British to impose imperialism. Well, that is not unheard of. Anyway, so the British, in order to protect their ships, signed a peace treaty with the rulers of these sheikhdoms in 1820, which basically asked the rulers to stop committing piracy. However, the treaties were not an outright success. A few local conflicts still persisted at the sea. Also, the treaties were not permanent and were to be renewed time and time again. But the sheikhs realized that these treaties created a peaceful atmosphere for their pearl trade which was very important for their economy since oil wasn't a thing yet. So they signed a permanent treaty with the British in 1853. And hence these sheikhdoms were known as the Trucial States since they were under a truce. In 1892, Britain feared the growing influences of Russia and France in the region. So they called the sheikhs again and signed an exclusive treaty which effectively gave them total control over the foreign policy of the Trucial States. The sheikhs also agreed to not give any part of their land to any power except the United Kingdom. In return, the British would give military protection to the Trucial Coast. It was a win-win situation for both. A few decades later, that is the 1950s and the 60s, a massive discovery took place which would transform the region, oil. With the discovery of oil, there were calls for unification by the sheikhs since they felt that they would be stronger united than being divided into small emirates. At the same time, the British realized that it would no longer be able to govern the Trucial states. It was costing them about 12 million pounds a year to keep their forces in the Gulf and they were not prepared to defend them in case of an attack. So in 1968, it was decided that Britain would end its protectorate over the sheikhdoms, which by that time was seven in number, along with Qatar and Bahrain, which were British protectorates as well. So, the actual idea of the UAE was a 9 Emirate Federation which also included Qatar and Bahrain. But as we know today, Qatar and Bahrain are not part of the UAE. So, what went wrong? In short, they walked out of the Federation because the rulers didn't come to terms on a lot of things and became independent countries themselves before UAE could become one. Finally, on 2nd of December 1971, the United Arab Emirates was formed with 6 Emirates. Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Sharjah, Ajman, Umm al Quwain, and Fujairah. The Emirate of Ras al Khaimah joined them two months later in February 1972, and hence we have the seven Emirates as we know today. But how does this union, which looks a bit complex, actually work? Well, that is the simple part. Each Emirate is ruled by an Emir who controls the local government. All the seven Emirates form the Federal Supreme Council. The Federal Supreme Council elects a president of the council every five years and this president is also the head of the United Arab Emirates. But there is a common understanding among the council members that the Emir of Abu Dhabi will always be the president and so he has traditionally been the head of the UAE since its inception. Also the Prime Minister of the nation has always been the Emir of Dubai, although that is not required by the constitution. So, most of the power in the country is concentrated in Abu Dhabi and Dubai, which are also the wealthiest of the Emirates. Each Emirate also has a capital city of the same name, like the capital of the Emirate of Abu Dhabi is the city of Abu Dhabi and so on. Abu Dhabi also serves as the capital of the entire country. Dubai is the most populous city with 3 million people. But most of the people who live in Dubai or UAE in general are not the local Emiratis. In fact, the Emiratis are less than 12% of the entire population, while 
Rest of the 88% are non-citizens, mostly from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Philippines and hundreds of other nationalities. But the UAE is not just about Dubai or Abu Dhabi. So why do we ignore the existence of the other Emirates? Simple, they don't have oil or have it in less amounts and also lack glitz and glamour. Sharjah has about 1.5 billion barrels of oil compared to 4 billion barrels of Dubai or a huge amount of 92 billion barrels in Abu Dhabi. Sharjah is more of a family-oriented emirate and is the cultural capital of the UAE. Sharjah forms a part of the Dubai metropolitan area, which also includes Ajman, which is the smallest emirate. Fujaira and Ras al Khaima are like. Mm, there is nothing significant I can say about them here. While Umm al Khuen is the least populated emirate with just 72,000 people. It looks like a sleepy fishing town, a huge contrast to its cousin just 60 kilometers away. So, when we think emirates, it is not just this picture, but also this. <laughs>